Hello everybody, I am Dr. Madhya Desai, Senior Consultant Physician from Ahmedabad. Today we are going to discuss a very important clinical problem of a case of breathlessness. Breathlessness is very common in indoor as well as outdoor practice and we would like to discuss the case of breathlessness under headings like what is breathlessness, what are the common causes of breathlessness, what are the important and serious causes of breathlessness which could be life threatening, what are the important points in the history that we should be inquiring for and what are the important clues when it comes to clinical examination and what are the basic investigation which we should be doing in a case of breathlessness and what are the special investigations and at least we will also have the brief discussion about the emergency management of a case of breathlessness. So we will begin with the definition of breathlessness. What is breathlessness? Breathlessness may mean anything to any other persons. Patients may describe their own feeling as breathlessness even if they have Brahman or they have some unusual sensations. But by definition, breathlessness or dyspnea is defined as subjective experience of breathing discomfort. Subjective experience of breathing discomfort. And this has to be evaluated in context of what is normal for that person, whether it is male or female, and what is the threshold of exertion for that person. Person who has been climbing five staircases every day and now become breathless on the same five staircases, then that becomes breathless. The other person may be just walking 100 yards daily and becoming breathless. Now, as again having a breathlessness. So it has to be evaluated in context to what is the threshold of exertion for that person. Is it acute or chronic concept? Generally it is regarded any breathlessness which has occurred over a period of few hours to days is regarded as acute onset breathlessness. Well one which comes up gradually over six to eight weeks is called chronic onset breathlessness. We'll begin with the two illustrative cases of different presentations of young and old patients and coming to the emergency room or OPD respectively. A male 21 years suddenly presents to the emergency room with a complaint of breathlessness of acute onset of 3 hours in the early morning. He also gives the history that he had been having this type of episodes of breathlessness off and on. On examination, he's breathless, his respiratory rate is 32 per minute, his pulse is 112 per minute, his blood pressure is 148 milliliters of mercury, his oxygen saturation is 84 at room air and he is typically restless, he is orthopnic. On respiratory system examinations, we hear extensive ronchi, polyphenic and crepitations all throughout both the lungs and on cardiovascular system examinations, he has steady cardio but no extra sounds, no third sound, fourth sound or normal and other systems early examine also do not find anything. So we start with immediate treatment in the form of oxygen and bronchodilator and he has a good response. So what do you think should be the differential diagnosis investigation? Obviously a young patient coming with acute onset breathlessness having similar complaints again and again in the past and healed by the treatment and this time also responding one would think of bronchial asthma. But again, we did not think of only asthma and we should also have different other conditions which could present in a patient with asthma that we will see later. As against that, another gentleman, 66 years, coming to the OPD with a complaint of shortness of breath, coming off and on on exertion for three months and he also has edema over the legs for one month. He is treated by his family doctor and he gets partial response. When he comes to us, his pulse is 96, his blood pressure is 130 by 76 milliliters of mercury, he has marked pallor, his oxygen saturation is 92 at room air, and he has a bilateral pitting edema. On cardiovascular system examination, he has a systolic murmur, appears to be hemic in origin, he also has thyroid sound, and chest examination reveals bilateral crepitations and on abdominal examinations he has liver just palpable and standard. So he is a gradual onset gentleman with anemia and signs of congestive heart failure. So obviously the cause underlying is the anemia and congestive heart failure both. But what is the cause of anemia and is the congestive heart failure solely because of anemia 
or he also has underlying coronary artery disease. That one has to keep in mind. Since it's an not an emergency case, we have all the time in the world to investigate. So what that comes to the point, what are the common causes of breathlessness? Respiratory and cardiovascular disease are the commonest cause and almost I would say 80% of the causes of breathlessness will fall in this. So we have to know and keep in mind when we investigate a case of breathlessness. Respiratory causes, obviously bronchial asthma, then pneumonia, bacterial as well as viral in a season where there is epidemic of influenza illness. One would always keep H1N1 pneumonia at the top of the list in the mind. Patient having COPD, patients having ARDS, even pleural effusions are also to be kept in mind. Interstitial lung disease and coronary hypertension have to be thought of when patients come with breathlessness of gradual onset. Amongst cardiovascular cause, most people do not realize that hypertension is one of the commonest cause of breathlessness on exertion and ischemic heart disease, congestive heart disease and valvular heart disease would obviously be thought of. But it is hypertension which we should always consider whenever patient has breathlessness on exertion. We know hypertension is one of the commonest cause of diastolic heart failure leading to breathlessness on exertion. What is important? Though not very common, there are other causes of breathlessness too, like anemia. And psychogenic causes are also important, particularly when patient comes in ER with typical hyperventilations or having some anxiety, anger or pain, he could be having breathlessness. Obesity can be an important cause of breathlessness, though we should not attribute everything to obesity in a patient who complains of breathlessness and he happens to be obese. But obese patients are likely to exert less and they are called deconditioned. So they may have breathlessness on little exertion because they are not used to it. So keep these conditions in mind. But what I want your draw attention is that remember the serious conditions. Whenever patient comes with breathlessness, at least these causes should be at the back of our mind when we see the patient examine the patient, take the history or investigate. Acute severe asthma, anaphylaxis. Could this patient have acute macular infarction or left ventricular failure? Is there a chance for pulmonary embolism? We have to investigate and even examine the lower limbs also for an evidence of decreased thrombosis. Could this be a case of pneumothorax or a pneumonia including H1N1? Or is there a chance of foreign body leading to asphyxia? or aspirations or ARDS. These are the conditions we must be at the keep at the back of the mind. What is important other than respiratory and cardiac cause? There are few conditions which are systemic causes which could also be uh, which could also lead patient to emergency room with breathlessness. Conditions like metabolic acidosis with any diabetic acidosis, uremic acidosis or some poison or also always keep in mind myasthenia gravis and Gulenbari syndrome as an important cause of breathlessness because if these are the conditions which we, we don't think of, we don't investigate and obviously will not manage. So keep these conditions, we should always have a broader mind as far as the conditions at the back of our mind are concerned and look for these conditions. In, in history taking, what is important is of course if the patient is too breathless, we cannot have enough time to take the history in detail. But if the patient has a breathlessness of gradual onset, always spare enough time for the history. But emergency too, we can at least inquire about the duration of the breathlessness, the rapidity of the onset of breathlessness and the degree, whether he is orthopnic, what is the rate of versioning. Anybody who has breathlessness and version in a matter of minutes, we have to think of conditions like acute severe asthma or pneumothorax or pulmonary embolisms or cardiac in origin. Is dyspnea intermittent which typically occurs in asthma, exertions which occur in COPD or cardiac conditions or anemia or is it nocturnal? Nocturnal dyspnea we always think of at least bronchial asthma and cardiac like LBF. Associate symptoms are very very important and that has to be inquired because that sometimes give the diagnosis. In the season of post-monsoon, if the patient has high grade fever, running nose, 
and sneezing, right? And a signs of uh, congestion in both the lungs, obviously you will think of h one n pneumonia. But otherwise, a patient having high grade fever, pleuritic chest pain, and little cough on findings only on one side, you would think of bacterial pneumonia. Hemoptysis is very, very important, has to be inquired, and similarly, chest pain and palpitations for cardiac causes. Is a patient a known case of asthma? Is it a known patient of coronary artery disease? Or is it a known patient of chronic bronchitis or emphysema? Because that will help us in establishing the cause of breathlessness. What are the medications the patient has been taking? If the patient has been prescribed bronchodilators, has been prescribed inhalers, whether the patient has been receiving some long acting anti rheumatic drugs, which could be the cause of the interstitial lung disease. So, all in all, medication history is very important. He will be receiving uh, medicines for his coronary disease, antiplatelet drugs, statins, all these drugs will help us. When it comes to examination, First and foremost thing, we have to record and keep checking vital signs. What is the patient's respiratory rate and what is the pattern of the breathing? Is his breathing suggestive of metabolic acidosis or Kussmaul's breathing? Kussmaul's breathing is deep and rapid breathing. If the patient was a deep and rapid breathing and his chest findings are near normal, always, always think of metabolic acidosis and try to investigate. As against that, the patient who has a typical hyperventilation <laughs> like this, and there is nothing in the examinations, obviously, think of it as a voluntary hyperventilation. The cause, underlying cause, could be psychogenic. Of course, we'll examine the patient in detail and then only declare as a psychogenic hyperventilation. Oxygen saturation with pulse oximetry is one of the important vital signs, which side, and has to be done repeatedly. Any person with an SpO2 of less than 90, one has to start oxygen before proceeding further because that patient can lead to dangerous level of hypoxia anytime. Always expect in consciousness level, patient who is drowsy, patient who is yawning, can have slow to return sun or hypoxia, patient who has a central sinusitis, again start oxygen before proceeding for further examinations. Always look for accessory muscles, whether he has a typical tripod position, whether his accessory muscles like sternum asteroid are working, and look at his breathing pattern. Is there, does he have inspiratory strider? Does he have a noise while taking a deep breath? Could there be a chance of some laryngeal problems or a foreign body which would give to strider? On general examination, one has to look for anemia and jaundice. But very importantly, look at the neck veins. Look for the internal and external jugular veins and see whether there is any congestion in the jugular veins and whether the Kussmaul sign is present. Normally, when a person takes a deep breath, the jugular venous pulse, venous column would move down. If on deep inspiration the level goes up, that suggests there is a paradoxical rise in the JVP and that suggests there is some obstruction to the filling of the heart with the right could be constrictive pericarditis or lymph nodes at the supra, superior vena cava function. Kyphos scoliosis and lymph nodes presence would also point to the diagnosis of some restrictive disease like sarcoidosis or the ankylosing. Look for edema over the legs. If the patient has edema, is it bilateral? Is it pitting? That obviously it's some systemic cause like congestive heart failure or polycerocytes when patient could have pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, also and that could be the cause of his breathlessness. But if the edema is unilateral, all the more important because that unilateral edema could be the sign of deep vein thrombosis and it could be something that we'll think of pulmonary embolism at the back of the mind. When it comes to respiratory system examination, a thorough respiratory system examination, including inspection, palpation, percussion, oscillation, is required. Particularly looking for the air entry symmetry of it, then chest movements, whether they are decreased on particular side, what are the foreign sounds, and what are the percussion findings. That will give us some idea about are we dealing with pneumothorax or pneumonia. Then, cardiovascular system examination, especially for the extra sounds like third sound, fourth sound, or a murmur and whether the patient has been having any arrhythmia, whether the heart sounds are irregular, either chance of atrial fibrillation.
Coming to the first line investigations, as I said, first and foremost, if the patient is hypoxic, having air hunger, having sinuses, our duty is first to start oxygen and then and then only proceed for the investigations. But simultaneously, when the patient is in emergency room, we have the help of other paramedic persons and we can also start managing as well as investigating the case. So first and foremost investigations are the chest X-ray and ECG. X-ray chest might give straight of the diagnosis like pneumothorax. ECG might give you the idea about the underlying cardiac conditions, whether it could be an acute myocardial infarction or changes of acute coronary syndrome of unstable angina or there may be changes of pericarditis really. Other investigations which are equally important are keeping in mind the other conditions as I said like hyponatremia or metabolic conditions like metabolic acidosis. If the patient is a known patient of diabetes, he should get not only glucose but serum acetone also. And all patients with an acidotic breathing get their renal functions. If the patient has a history of thyroid problems, at least get TSH. Then if the patient is, has come with a gradual onset breathlessness in the OPD, we can get spirometry and pick activity flow and get whether it could be a case of bronchiolasthema. We can also repeat the spirometry with bronchodilator and see the response in the pulmonary function test. 2D echocardiogram is very helpful and nowadays most of the emergency rooms have the facility of 2D echocardiogram. In 2D echocardiogram, the important conditions of the regional pulmonary abnormality or any valvular diseases or pericardial effusions or right sided uh, heart pressures can suggest different etiology like cardiac or pulmonary embolism. The other investigations might be required in specific cases if the patient is drowsy, has suspicion of CO2 retention or patient has acidosis, at least we should get arterial blood gas once and that may give us further guidelines whether the patient needs emergency treatment like ventilated therapy. If cardiac etiology for breathlessness is suspected, we must get at least troponin T and markers for heart failure in the form of either BNP or anti-pro BNP. It becomes very difficult in practice many times in a patient who is a known patient of asthma and now come with chest pain and breathlessness. At times it is difficult to attribute the cause of dyspnea to ischemic conditions or respiratory conditions and the findings are overlapping. It is investigations like troponin T or anti-pro and BNP would give us the guidelines and indicate whether we are dealing with a respiratory problem at this point of time or a cardiac problem and how aggressive we should be investigating and treating. Pulmonary embolism is also something unless we think of it will not get and D-dimer is a very very important test at least it has got a very good negative predictive value. When you are thinking of pulmonary embolism and D-dimer is negative at least it's a doubt. But in a patient where D-dimer is positive the findings, whether it's an ECG finding or an eco finding, also suggest it could be pulmonary embolism. They must, and if the patient is having a severe hypotension, not responding to treatment, it becomes mandatory to get CT pulmonary angiography because that's the only chance of intervening and saving the patient's life. So, CT pulmonary angiography in a patient of breathlessness is a very important investigation. When the patient has come with breathlessness of a gradual onset and there are suspicion of either some mediastinal compression by the lymph nodes or interstitial lung disease. We have to get HRCT thorax and patients whom we are suspicion having some malignancy or some bronchial problems, bronchoscopy is a very very important investigation. How do we manage in emergency? In patient who has come with breathlessness and if he is also showing signs of hypoxia, oxygen should be given as a first line of treatment and should be continued till we find out the alternative diagnosis. If the patient has other findings, dermatological findings like hives and proitic features or patient has severe hypotension or chest also swelling, bilateral bronchi crepitations and there may be a history of possible drug allergy or hypersensitivity, suspicion of anaphylaxis 
always give adrenaline give anti histaminics both anti h1 and h2 histaminics like phenylamine malate and denitrogen and then later on steroids if it look feel that it's a case of acute severe asthma nebulization with bronchodilators and inhaled steroids and injection methyl prednisolone depending on whether it is a steroid dependent case then we have to give it higher dose like 125 or 250 mg otherwise we may give 40 or 60 mg of methyl prednisolone important thing is it has to be repeated after having the patient examined injection aminophile or theophylline may be required but we have to be very careful these are the drugs which has got a very narrow therapeutic uh, to toxic ratio and it may cause arrhythmias it may cause hypotension and if you attack extra visit might produce necrosis so one has to be very careful in using these drugs salvitamol injectables are available but sparingly used if a patient who is young and not responding to routine line of asthma management even adrenaline is also can be given safely if the patient has left ventricular failure as the cause of breathlessness we must start with either a fusamide or prosimide and nitrites if the blood pressure allows and then the other part of the cardiac management should be done with high dose of statins and antiplatelet drugs should be given if a patient who has a suspicion of pneumothorax we just cannot waste any time particularly it happens to be a tension pneumothorax when every breath patient pneumothorax is increasing unless we do something in time it's a might produce severe hypotension and shock and we may not be able to revive him so emergency treatment for pneumothorax is decompression by a simple needle aspiration with the catheter baby frank alt r9 but if the patient has a pneumothorax which is uh, has been detected by x ray as an hybrid pneumothorax or we feel that the pneumothorax is not responding to treatment maybe we should go for intercostal drainage with tube thoracotomy and we have to connect it with water seal device with or without suction so all patients need to be treated based on what is our first line of diagnosis and to conclude dyspnea is a common problem in opd as well as indoor patients serious conditions have to be kept at the back of the mind like severe asthma like you left ventricular failure pneumothorax pulmonary embolism but non cardio respiratory conditions like metabolic acidosis also should be always thought of other differential diagnoses like anemia obesity hyperventilation should also be kept in the mind back of the mind detailed history and thorough clinical examinations always help in reducing the number of investigations and managing early always record repeatedly recording vital signs pulse oximetry findings systemic findings will give us the idea about the prognosis part and the response to treatment specialist consultation should always be sought for as and when required be it a pulmonary or a cardiologist but the emergency treatment has to be started by the doctor who is in the patient so thank you very much